Oh, I got a bunch of rusty, crusty stuff here. All VW parts, you know, exhaust manifold, rocker cover, and a bunch of sheet metal for the cooling system. It's pretty rusty, crusty stuff. And all that rust has got to go. Now you can use a sandblaster to get that off real quick, but if you don't have a sandblaster, there's a real easy way you can strip the rust off of it at home by making an electrolysis tank. And chances are you probably already have most of this stuff on hand. It's not that complicated. What you need is you need a tank. You know, I just use a plastic tub. You're going to need an electrolyte, this stuff. And electrolyte is a fluid that conducts electricity, right? And you can make this real easy by, you know, filling it with water and then adding a little bit of sodium carbonate. And that makes it relatively conductive of electricity. Now, if you don't have this stuff around, you can pick it up at any, you know, big box store for like three, four bucks. There's a lot of it there that goes a long ways. Uh, you don't have that, you can take baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, and you can cook it down in the oven at about 400 degrees for, an hour, say, an hour or so. And sodium bicarbonate decomposes into, what do you know? Sodium carbonate. Um, I think you're going to need a direct current power supply. You know, this one's about 15 volts right here. It measures out slightly higher than that. Anything 12 to 20 volts should be should be plenty to get the job done. It needs to have a decent current rating on it. You know, I wouldn't use anything with less than one amp, especially if you're running higher voltages. And then you're going to need an anode and a cathode. Now, the way this works is you're going to have an electrolytic solution with an anode and a cathode. Now, cathode is going to be your part that you want to de-rust. This happens to be, you know, a you know, telephone pipe from the preheat system for the carburetors. Now, the cathode is negatively charged with electricity. So you're going to want to take your negative lead and attach it to that. And it's extremely important that this is a negative lead. Then for your anode, you're going to have your positive lead attached to. Now, I just used a few, you know, angle iron pieces, you know, suspended about midway in here. One on either side, you can see the other one right there. And the way this works is it passes electricity through the electrolyte here. And so you got uh, a negatively charged piece right here. So the electrons are going to want to flow from the cathode to the anode, all right, through this electrolyte. Alright, now, at the cathode, things get ripped apart, right? So it decomposes particles, and on the anode, it oftentimes actually composes particles. Uh, for example, uh, you ever hear people talk about anodized aluminum? Well, they just hook their piece of aluminum up to a positive charge, just like this, and they do a controlled run of this and it oxidizes the surface of it and you get that nice hard surface finish. There's a reason they call it anodizing because it's the piece of aluminum becomes the anode, right? Anode, anodize. All right, the process also works in reverse. You can strip oxidized things off like rust. This rust is just, you know, ceramic coating on here is what it comes down to. It's just iron oxide. And when things get ripped apart, it rips apart and it's going to want to flow towards the anode. Right. Here's a little demonstration on this, how this actually works. I got a ammeter here connected in, ser in uh, yeah, series with an alligator clip here for the cathode and the power supply. So this will be reading the amount of current that's going to pass between the cathode and the anode. So just for fun, let's actually hook this up here once. You should see pretty quickly all the bubbles start coming up. It's actually hydrogen gas being released from the reaction. You can see right now that we're actually drawing 0.74 amps of current. So if you do the math with a 15 volt power supply, you're looking at about, you know, a 20 ohm resistance between you know the cathode and your anode 
So the solution is pretty, pretty conductive. Give you a little shot of this right here. This is what things look like after about an hour. You know, this is what the rod looked like originally right here. You know, real crusty. But you can see right here, you know, it's being taken down to the bare metal right here. And there's a little bit of black sludge that's on there. You know, you leave that in there a while more. And eventually when it's all stripped down, you can take a towel and just wipe it right off. Now notice that the amount of current being drawn is proportional to how much surface area of the object is in the water. And you can see, as I start pulling it out, the current draw becomes less and less. Okay? That's really important because when you go to do some large piece like this, well now you have to worry about exceeding the current rating of your power supply. Now when I do that one, that will exceed the current of this. But, got another one right here from an old computer that's capable of doing 10 amps. So this will be able to handle the big jobs right here, but for now, it's a good one to just leave overnight. One of the great things about this process is safety, both safety for the user and safety for the metal. Um, as far as safety for the metal goes, this is also often used in uh, museum restorations, and the reason is it doesn't hurt the metal any, which is really important for a situation like this where we got rock going on right here right where it meets the number two cylinder you know the cylinder head right there gets real hot and the metal is going to tend to corrode away there fast you're going to sandblast that or something even soda blast it'll take out a lot of that this by just stripping the rust off of it electrically it's going to leave the rest of that metal intact and that gives us something to patch you know that's why a lot of museum restorations use this because it doesn't affect the solid steel at all it only affects the oxide layer on the outside. Next thing, because we're dealing with low voltages here, you know, you can stick your hand in here, it's not gonna hurt. You know, it's 15 volts in this case, the potential difference between these two. You know, even if you put your hand on one and one hand on the other, it's not even enough to really give you much of a poke. I mean, if you, if you just hang on to this and you stick your other hand, you know, in the solution, it can give you a little poke. But it's like licking a dead 9-volt battery, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing that's going to cause you any issues whatsoever. As far as the hydrogen gas, you see a lot of these people that post, oh, keep flames away. Well, yeah, I mean, hydrogen floats up and it's going to dissipate so much that it's not going to become an issue. You know, maybe if you close the top on this and then stick a lighter in there and boom, you know, two hours later. But it looks like a lot, but the amount generated is so little. Uh, you know, it's not going to affect much, you know, I mean, just use common sense, don't, don't point a propane torch at that thing or anything. You know, and then of course you have your high voltage, you know, in your power supply, so just keep that out of the water, don't be sticking, you know, 10, 15 in the water, I mean, you'd have to be a real bozo to be doing that, but hey, some people do it, and that's why you have those crazy warnings, like caution hot on a McDonald's coffee mug, stuff happens. You know, all right, so enough playing around now. I took, I'm gonna start running some parts here. So I got uh, got the rocker covers, I mean the rocker cover bales here. Let me just hook that one up a second. What we're gonna do, I got um, enough of this line here to suspend it just below the level of the water. So we're gonna dump these things in here, both of them. situated a little bit better here all right okay all right so now you got our two cathodes sitting in the water oh and another thing you should know when I hook these up I uh, took a little bit of the rust off on the inside corner before I tied them on there because rust is a fantastic insulator as it turns out and you're not going to get a good connection if you just clip it to the rust. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to make an electrical connection between these two. Boom. 
There. That right there, the electrical connection, what do you know? And then we're going to connect the cathode here. All right. Now you see our current rating right here for the two parts. We're at 1.45 amps for the both of these parts. And that's good. And we can leave this sit overnight. It's part of the beauty of this process is you can just let it go overnight and you can leave this thing plugged in almost indefinitely and it still won't hurt the steel. So overnight is usually pretty doggone good, you know. Because this is just simple washing soda, you know, Arm & Hammer washing soda, which is, you know, for laundry and water, you know, and just a little rust scuzz floating around here and sunk in the bottom, you can pitch this stuff out, you know, in your yard or down the drain. There's no big issue with it. Unless, of course, you were to use uh, chromium anodes. If you used anything chromed in here, you get yourself in a heap of trouble because the EPA does not like chromates, and you are going to have to unload that at a special hazardous waste place. Now, you can see our anode right here has all kinds of scuzz on it. Now, remember, I said that these, the cathodes, are negatively charged. Electrons are also negatively charged, so they're going to leave here and go to the anode along with all that crap. So what happens to all the rust and stuff that you strip off? Collects on here and sinks to the bottom. One thing to be aware of is these anodes are consumables. Eventually they just wear out. Eventually they get coated with so much crap they're no good anymore. You gotta take them out, scrape them down, get all that junk off. Eventually these wires, these uh, wires that connect here those will have to get replaced eventually, but they do last quite a while, you know, especially in a setup like mine where it runs the whole length of the tank, there's a lot of surface area there. But when it stops, when it starts losing efficiency, clean that off, grind it off, whatever you gotta do. It's some nasty, scuzzy stuff, but there's, there's no harm in any of it. And, you know, get a fresh one in there, make sure it's nice, fresh metal, and you'll be good to go again. Once you pull your part out, you're gonna wanna wash it right away take it to some warm water and scrub it with a towel if a towel doesn't get all the black scuzz off that's left over on it you know get one of those scrubby pads that you use for doing your dishes and it, it should come right off it's not stuck that I mean you can see that there's a little little of that black scuzz here you know it's not a big deal actually it's really the same thing is if you just spray this rust neutralizer stuff that makes a primable surface for painting you know, if you take rust and spray this on it, that's actually basically the same thing as what that black stuff is right there. Um, yeah, once it's clean, if you're going to paint it, you know, hit it with some brake cleaner, you know, just to make sure there's no residue or of any sort left on it. And then paint right away on it, otherwise it will flash rust. If you're going to store it, again, flash rust, uh, flash rust ugh, is an issue, so spray it with some WD-40 wipe it around that'll just give it a nice protective coat so you're not gonna see any flash rust if you forget and there is flash rust just spray some of this on it don't bother with anything else you know don't sand it this just makes primable surface out of it and you just throw your paint right over top of it for comparison there's another valve cover this one hasn't been done yet still a little greasy oily I'd like to get some of that off so it doesn't build up in the tank you know because you can reuse this water over and over again it's like a car battery you don't have to add new washing soda it's just the water is you know depleted over time so you have to just add new water you know um, at least until it gets too gross you don't want to use it but yeah for comparison before after it's a pretty decent process you know it's pretty hands-off once you hook up your piece you just let it sit and let it do its thing and the electricity does the rest for you